Adrian Moore. I'm Vice President at Reason Foundation. I'm a transportation economist and I do a lot of work on urban transportation systems and and uh, how to pay for transportation and how to make markets work in transportation. Uh, I've been working now for a number of years on a project in China working with uh, some universities in China as well as one municipal government there on figuring out some ways they can approach their transportation systems that take advantage of pricing and markets uh, but also builds out the kind of infrastructure they need for the population growth they have. They've got a fair number of cities that are you know bigger than any city in the US except for New York and you've got cities there where they're growing by a hundred thousand people a month and they're growing by ten thousand cars a month. Just think about building that many parking spaces <laughs> uh, to you know to have uh, to accommodate cars uh, coming into a city at you know a hundred and hundred twenty thousand thirty thousand a year. The car is you know transformative in China because uh, it's such a new phenomenon. It's only in the last you know decade that the number of cars in these cities has really taken off and that small business people can pool up enough money to buy one. The Chinese have put a lot of emphasis on building a lot of infrastructure and in some ways that's been beneficial to them because it's growth that's dri driven largely by their human capital. It's their people moving to the cities, being entrepreneurial, uh, in recent decades getting the freedom to pursue uh, their entrepreneurial drives or to go to school as they've ramped up their higher education system. So these, the human capital has just exploded in China and that's what's driven their growth. The bad side is of course that this is a highly authoritarian government, a highly authoritarian society. They've uh, not held back from displacing millions of people in order to build this infrastructure. There's no property rights there, so they've done what they want, when they want, and how they want, which when it works, you know, looks like an economic benefit because you're not counting the cost to all the people who are displaced or, or pushed aside. I don't actually find rush hour in Chinese cities to be that radically different from rush hour in Chicago or Los Angeles. In China, the, the big difference is you see a lot of other people traveling by means other than cars still, uh, which you don't see in the U.S. I mean, in the U.S., outside of New York, in cities like Chicago and San Francisco, you still got more than 80% of the people traveling by car. So, yeah, you might see the train go by in Chicago or San Francisco or the BART line or whatever, but you don't see people, a lot of people walking, you don't see a lot of people biking. There is every city in China that you travel through by car, you, when you're stuck in traffic, you see, yeah, there's a lot of people walking, there's a lot of people biking, there's a lot of people on those buses and trains, they're full, they're not like the empty buses and trains you see in most U.S. cities. So that's the real difference, is there they really do use all the modes of transportation much more so than we do in the U.S. because in the U.S. we're wealthier and everybody has cars. You know, I've always been fascinated by the fact that if you're a poor person in a city in the United States and you do not own a car, you borrow more rides from friends with cars than you ride the transit system, according to national statistics. So, you know, it's an interesting system where bumming a ride is a more better system for most people than using the public transit system. In China, it's nothing like that. It's a much more, so many people don't own cars. Cars are so new there. Now, as the Chinese cities are getting congested, as the number of cars in these cities is exceeding the capacity of the road system that they built, even with all the new roads they have built and all the new roads they are building, the government's wrestling with how do we deal with this congestion? And they're not willing to trade off their growth in that industry in order to reduce congestion. So they're experimenting with congestion pricing. Uh, they're looking at how do they build better systems uh, to manage their transportation networks, uh, using a lot of new technology, adopting new technologies much faster than we do in the U.S. And, you know, they're more willing to keep building uh, as they grow. You know, in the U.S., we've almost stopped building urban transportation infrastructure.